Hey, what's up? This is Paul Salt from Super Easy Apps. I want to answer 10 questions that I've received about auto layout. If you've had problems, you're gonna wanna watch this and learn how to get started. All right, so right before I jump into that, I just wanna let you know that I've got a new course. It's out and available now, and it's closing on Monday, February 12th. I don't know when I'll open it up again, but this is a new course that's gonna teach you auto layout. So if you're struggling with anything, you wanna learn the fundamentals, you wanna learn how to overcome challenges of making your app work on all the different iPhones or the iPads, or you wanna learn how to do resizable graphics, this course will help you. All right, so let's jump into the 10 questions. Uh, I will have a link for the course down below, or you can click a little pop-up that might appear somewhere on the screen, and let's go right into the questions. So one of the questions was, how do I start with design? And so it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do the entire app, or if you're just trying to get started and make something that looks pleasing, it really helps to start with some design documents. And I have a few of those open. So if we were to look at a, a login screen tutorial, and I show how to do this in the course, I show how to take this design, which has been mocked up in Sketch, and how to actually implement it in code. We really have to break down the UI components into their parts. I also demonstrate this in my tip callout designable, where I create this asset that we see here on the screen. It's, it's actually made out of multiple parts that can actually resize. You can see the different parts in this colored image, and then you can see how I've sort of sliced it up and exported it. Importing that into Xcode allows us to create this widget, which I demonstrate in the, the second module, and this is something that is resizable, it's rescalable, so depending on the form factor, we can make things change sizes. So when we're working with auto layout, we need to think about how things can resize, what things need to stay fixed, and what are going to be sort of flexible sizes. That's one of the things that we wanna keep in, in mind. It also comes down to breaking down the part into, the component into parts, so that some things stay static, like we wouldn't want this little arrow graphic to resize but we do want this region around it to resize and we want the font size to resize. So getting that type of effect requires understanding a lot of the fundamental concepts with auto layout with both size and position. Next question, what is a better solution when you have labels in a line row? Now this one's a little bit complicated. At first it looks like it's really easy and I've, I've mocked this up uh, along the bottom of this document. At first it looks really easy because you can just put elements in a row and you can add the constraints and sort of make them work. The problem with this is that you'll have different sized assets and as you're working with it, some things are gonna grow and some things are gonna be bigger than the others. So if I were to maybe have this, we might get text clipping or something like that versus something that will do equal spacing. And we can avoid that by adding more constraints and this actually has some hidden views. So these are two views that I can turn the color off to hide them. So if we change these over to the default, they disappear, but they're still involved with the layout process. So that when I go and run the app, what we'll see is that it's going to look the same as the stack view. So there's just more constraints that you have to add. And if you wanna use the stack view approach, you can set that up. There's different constraints that you can set up on the actual stack view so that it fills equally and, and takes up the right amount of space. So that's how you would get started with equal views. All right, next question. Fourth question, we've got how to solve iPhone X related auto layout issues. Now iPhone X can introduce some problems with the new safe areas. And what you have to keep in mind is that the apps that we used to design that fit sort of a normal rectangle are not going to scale exactly to fit the new iPhone X design. And so I have a little demo, I'll just pull open one of the, the lesson videos where I show how to fix the auto layout issues on the iPhone X. You can sort of just walk through and sort of see visually the, the steps that I'm going through to change some of the constraints to the super view and, and deal with those types of issues. So again, that's something that I'll cover in the course. Uh, another question, number five, how do you know which size to start on for anchoring or for which ones to add for covering? Now, typically when I do auto layout, I'll start with the top and the bottom, and I'll, I'll work my way from top to bottom. This is sort of a best practice of at least just getting the vertical position set up for your main content views. 
And once you've established that, then you can start moving on to your sort of secondary views. And, and that might be the position and, and moving it around. If you're doing this all in code, uh, which I cover in the course in the, the fifth module, then you're going to want to probably work in a, uh, a fashion where you're doing top and then right and then bottom and then left for your constraints as you're adding these different anchors. That'll keep consistency so that when you're scanning code, you can understand, okay, it has all the constraints, it's good to go. There's a lot of rules. What we're trying to really do is just set up the, the position and the size. And that becomes a little bit challenging with some of the UI components that can stretch and scale. All right, sixth question. Is there a minimum of constraints that cover most use cases? Now for this, yes, there are a minimum and it depends on what you're doing. If it's an image, it's gonna have an implicit size. If it's a, a label, it's gonna have an implicit size. Like this label has an implicit size based on its font as well as its point size. And so that's gonna dictate how big it is. And so when it's just a label and we don't care about how it positions in relation to other views, all we need to specify is the position. So the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, and that's going to put it in the right spot on the screen. Once we want to control some more fine tuning, let's say we want to do equal spacing. Not only do we have to have position explained, but we do have to describe how size relates to each other. So if I want equal width labels, then I have to add that constraint. So you can start with the basics of just getting the size and the position down, and then you can start adding on rules that will give some extra clarity on how things need to scale and grow or shrink. All right, so it's just position and size, and sometimes you can get away with just position, but it really depends on how complex your UI is. The next question, are universal applications possible with a single storyboard? And the answer is yes. We have a concept called size classes. If you click on this little bar along the bottom, you can switch over to an iPad device and if you wanted to change the, the way something lays out here, you can reposition it and you can add new constraints just specifically for this size class that won't apply on the smaller size classes. So that's how we can create layouts that work on both iPad as well as iPhone and sell those as universal apps on the App Store. All right, next question, number eight is, how do I do custom cells for collection views and table views? You can use the prototyping tool when you drag out a, a new user interface. So let's drag out a, a table view. And what you'll see are these prototype cells. Within the prototype cells, you can go in and you can customize these. So you can change the height of a prototype cell. You can drag different labels, position them in different spots. You can even add buttons if you need to. And down at the bottom, you can find images that you can throw in there. So if we search for an image, maybe you need to have some kind of detail image on the left, and maybe you need to have some kind of detail image on the right that's maybe a, a much smaller image. You can go ahead and position those. You can create your title graphics, create some headings, create uh, a, a subhead, and then if you wanted to have user interaction on something like this, you could sort of rearrange this. Let's put maybe the image above the button. So this is sort of how you would lay out the UI. And then the next step is to add auto layout constraints. So now we have to explain, okay, this needs to be a fixed distance away from our leading edge. And so we could set up that distance and we can sort of go through the same process that we do to lay out the, the constraints of a, an entire app just for a, a small view that we would see in a table view like on Twitter or like a Facebook feed. All right, so that's how we can go ahead and start that. I will have a, an entire module in the course that's dedicated to working with the, the layout constraints for a table view as well as a collection view and a scroll view. So if that's interesting for you, I'm gonna cover it in the course. All right, number nine, someone's asking or saying, I lack the concepts on the relative positions, the absolute positions, stretching, and often I get confused with vertical and horizontal directions and just doing it the wrong way. So if you're ever confused, don't worry. I sometimes mess up. 
But the nice thing about working with auto layout, at least in storyboard, is that you can undo any changes. So sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit dyslexic and I go ahead and when I want to set up a, a vertical constraint, sometimes I click on something like center horizontally and that's not exactly what I wanted. And so I can just do an undo to sort of undo that type of thing. So if you're running into these types of issues where you really don't understand the concepts, it really takes a step back to understand the big picture. You have to start with the fundamentals. You have to understand how auto layout works, how different controls scale. The basics are pretty easy in terms of you just need to specify the rules for how the thing needs to look. It comes becomes more complex once we have more rules that need to be defined based on variable or dynamic behavior, or if we need to hide or show something, if we need to animate something, that's when it can become a little bit more complex. But if you can break down your UI into its components and, and try to modularize it into reusable components that we can put on different parts of the screen, then that can help a lot with thinking about the, the bigger picture and how the relationships between the different objects in our screen are going to behave. All right, so last question, and this one a lot of my students run into, and this is about errors with Xcode's recommended constraints. And so one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that it is never really a good option to choose if you if we were to select this view right here, and I said on, and I clicked on the triangle TIE fighter in the very bottom right corner of the storyboard, and I say, reset to suggested constraints or add missing constraints. If I do either one of these, we're gonna get some wonky behavior. And it's because Xcode doesn't really know how we want this to lay out. And so it might make it so that your label's a fixed width and then it starts clipping text. It might not make it dynamic so that you can have multi-line and sort of multi-line labels to have dynamic content. Like if there's a long tweet in your app or if there's a short tweet in your app and you wanna have multiple lines of text, you can run into issues where Xcode just doesn't understand that type of thing. It's made to do like the bare minimum just to, just to show you the size and the position. That's what it's going to do. And a lot of times that won't work for a resizable user interface, which is what we need to be building. So it requires understanding how that's going to work. I really don't recommend using those unless you're checking to sort of see, okay, what am I missing? So let's say, we were working on this and we had set up our top space. We added that and we set up our trailing space. And then we're we're stuck. We're, we don't know why it's not working. Why is it still red? Why am I still seeing issues with this? And so you might see this issue dialog over on the, the right side of your document outline. And if you click on that, it's telling you, okay, it needs constraints for the height. And so do you add a constraint for the height or do you add a constraint to the bottom of the cell? And, and that's a question that you have to sort of determine. And then you might need this, this image to resize. So then you might need some additional rules or logic that's going to say, okay, well, if the image is really big, I, I want the cell to grow or, or you might just want it to be a fixed square. And so you want the aspect ratio to be preserved and you want a flexible bottom margin. So these are things that we have to start thinking about when we're working with auto layout. And it's not always intuitive when we're reading Apple's documentation. All right, so that's that's 10 different questions that I've received about auto layout. I do have a new course that is coming out. It's out, you, it's available to join in. And it's gonna close down on Monday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. If you wanna get into this course, now is your chance, now is your opportunity. It's only offered for a little bit of time, all right? so. I hope those answered some of your common questions with auto layout. And if you're interested in learning more about how to design user interfaces that can adapt, or if you're interested in learning about how you can take existing designs or mock up and create different buttons, or just take an existing sketch design and turn that into an app, then this course is going to show you the fundamental concepts and walk you through step by step on how to get started. All right. So I've got links down below if you're interested and learn auto layout fast. Otherwise, have a great day and I'll have more tutorials on how to work with auto layout in the near future. Thanks and click the thumbs up if this was helpful. I will see you later.